and I was ready to just to just give up give up the content creation give up transaction coordination what was I going to do after that I don't know welcome back to transaction care this is my vlog series documenting my journey in business real estate through wealth ups downs all of the in-betweens and as you see from the title I'm talking about basically auditing my life this is a continuation from my previous video about starting over at the age of 40. Yes, I am 40, believe it or not. And for those that believe it, we don't have to go that, we don't have to go there. <laughs> but ultimately, this video is a continuation from that previous topic. So if you haven't already watched it, go check it out. I'll put the link here or in the description. But I wanna talk about how I got to this point today, actively talking to you right now about this topic because just a month ago and I would honestly say for the last year year and a half it, it's just been a struggle for me to find my footing and I knew coming into a new decade I had to I had to shift I had to pivot right and I turned 40 in April at the time of this recording it is the middle of July so it's only been a couple of months April May June July like two and a half months May June July three months and I have to show myself grace. I have to give myself grace because these things don't happen overnight. But there was a point last month where I was like, all right, this is the schedule. This is the routine. This is what I need to do. These are the numbers I need to hit. These are, you know, blah, all the things, right? I thought I had it all in order. And as a person of faith, you know, I do believe in God. Uh, it would... You know, it's all about God's plan. <laughs> and there was a weekend where things just weren't going right. Everything kind of fell out of order, out of place, which is expected, right? Uh, but for me, at that particular time, it kind of bled into the week. And then all of a sudden, my schedule, everything I had envisioned for the week, for the month, for the rest of this year, fell out of place. On top of that, I remember I was a little under the weather, I was tired, there was just so many factors and, and variables kind of getting in the way of me progressing, or at least what I thought was me progressing. <laughs> and in those couple of days where I was just kind of in this funk, in this lull, in this state of mind where I just was like, I, I just wanna give up. I'm over all of this, this is hard, it's difficult, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not making any money from this. It doesn't make any sense. And I was ready to just, to just give up, give up the content creation, give up transaction coordination. What was I going to do after that? I don't know. I just knew that I had it all set and then it didn't work. But that is the beauty of what I've learned from being self-employed is that you have to be agile. You have to be able to react in those types of situations and, and look at them as opportunities instead of things that will derail you. And I was starting to go down that path of derailment. And once I kind of resurfaced, you know, I let a couple of days go by, let myself have that moment. I realized, you know what? what is my why? What, what am I doing this for? Who am I doing this for? What are my reasons? And like, what are my goals? And I started to really think about like, if someone were to stop me in the middle of the street right now and put a camera or a mic in my face and ask me like, what, are, what is my why? Why do I want to do real estate? Or why do I want to have my own business? Or why do I want to be self-employed? Or why do I do anything that I do today? Why am I talking to this camera? And I didn't have an answer. And that got me thinking and reflecting about the past seven to 10 years, which I discussed in my previous video, starting over at 40, where what I was working towards back then is not the same as today. Like there were so many different people involved back then. There was, I was way younger. <laughs> really young 32 33 you know early 30s and now as I'm you know I mean yes age is just a number but it, you know in terms of measuring time and wanting to have that fresh start in my 40s and then having that that point last month where I was just in a funk I realized wow I haven't 
taken the time to audit my life. So that's what this whole video is going to be about. Just talking about how I got to this point, what questions I answered for myself and feel free to take notes. Feel free to get a piece of paper out or do what I did and just open a Google doc and just start writing. You know, I also had uh, my handy dandy notebooks that I, I, I carry around and write in and I just started just dumping everything in my mind. It was messy. It was disorganized. It was unesthetically pleasing. And I think that's where I kind of got stuck in a lot of my movement because one self-awareness is amazing, but it's also exhausting, right? Like sometimes when you know too much, it almost restricts you from making the decisions or taking those leaps and being more, you know, risk, more of a risk taker like I was when I was younger. You know, having done a lot of work on myself over the years, I, I just have been in this state of like, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back instead of thinking about, I want to move forward. I'm moving forward. How do I progress? How do I take these leaps forward again? What are my new leaps? So, you know, I felt better. It was a fresh week. And this was again, a couple months ago. I mean, a couple months ago, this was about a month ago. And I said, you know what? I have to start over. This is why this happened. I, I couldn't just take these leaps from the point where I was because it was almost like it was almost like I was maneuvering through, like I had sorted and taken out all the trash. I mean, I had sorted and like, you know, had all the trash bags in a section, but I never took them out to the actual trash can. Not to say that my life was trash or, <laughs> or everything that I had done was trash. It was more so like the things that were trash, I didn't take out. The things that should have been in bins and put into storage weren't put away. And then I didn't make space for, for anything new. I didn't know what my new looked like. You know what I mean? And this, these questions and, and these things were key for me at this point in time today. And, and in order to stay focused, to stay disciplined, to um, stay consistent, to stay encouraged, motivated, but ultimately just focused. I was not focused at all. I was leaning on 2018 me when it's 2024. So where did I start? I started out with a pen and paper. In fact, it was this exact notebook, pen and paper, blank page. And I just started writing. I'm the type that I like to write like my first draft. And then that's the other thing I started to let go of like, having drafts. I always felt like I got to get it done right in the first try. No, we're not doing that anymore. You know, some things, yeah, do it messy and afraid, you know, done is better than perfect. Yes. But some things require, you know, a few drafts, a few takes, and that's okay. If you mess up, you go back from the drawing board, but you never all, you, you know, you aren't always starting back from zero. You're starting from a fresh, new experienced advantage. So I grabbed a piece of paper and I just wrote everything that I was feeling, the, 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 the good, the bad, the ugly, and what I wanted the future to look like. And I just got it all out on paper. I just purged all of those feelings and thoughts and emotions and goals and dreams. I got it all out. I mean, let me see if I still have, um, I mean, it's just like pages and pages of, of stuff, right? I started with, um, you know, what are my intentions? What do I want out of this? What do I... What am I struggling with, you know, and what's working? What's not working? Am I, what are my crutches? What are my weaknesses? What are my strengths? You know, and kind of going through everything that I've learned over the years through coaching, through therapy, through journaling, through prayer, through exercise, physically, emotionally, mentally, all of that. And it's like, I purged, um, I asked more questions and then I got into more detailed questions of like, um, you know, what do I want? What don't I want? And then I went into what is my why? So I just started, I listed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, like 15 things. And your why could be different. You know, this is just me purging things on paper, but your why could be one word. It could be a statement. It could be a person. It could be an experience you want to achieve, a place you want to visit, a job you want to have it, everyone's why is different but we need 
those reasons to have that solid foundation. So when things go crazy or you you lose focus or when things are going great, you could check in. When things are going wrong, you could check in with yourself and just go straight to your why. And then the next page, I wrote my goals and my achievements. You know, what do I want to accomplish in this process? What are the big numbers? What are the what, what, what are the feelings I want to feel? What are the jobs I want to have? The, what is the career path I want I want to um, go down or paths? I don't know, right? Well, you know, what are my big goals? And um, I, again, wrote all those down. And then I wrote, what are my dreams? Like, what are my big dreams, my outlandish dreams, all of those things? What are like the most simplest things I want to do? Like, for instance, one of them was to... Um, uh, like it, a lot of it has to do with travel like the, um but then like the smallest one is to like own an ipad pro <laughs> that's one of my dreams like you know again i was just purging i was just i just needed to get it out on paper i didn't care what it sounded like if it was you know it but it, this is for me so the, do the same for yourself right and then I, the next page I wrote like my vanity metrics and money metrics. Like what is the, 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 the most I need to make, um, or want to make, you know, I want to max out my Roth. I want to, you know, um, this many subscribers, this many followers, you know, this is how much I want to pay for this or that or earn for this or that. Uh, so I got all that out. Uh, my savings goals and where I want to allocate my money, where I want to allocate my savings, um, my debt payoff plan, you know what I mean? And like, when, I, what order, how am I going to pay this off? That's got a, another thing that was causing a lot of my discour discouragement was getting into debt after not being in debt for 10 years. And, you know, we'll talk about debt in future videos because that's a whole separate topic. Am I right? Am I right? <laughs> but auditing my life was really just sitting with myself and being honest. And, and j again, full transparency, I did not take just an hour to do this. I spent an hour for hour to two, three hours for about a week, maybe even two weeks, because I'm still kind of adding to it as we speak. But the first draft, first night, I just sat with a pen and paper, right? And then talking about money, talking about goals, talking about dreams. Um, what else? So, yeah, and then that was it. So I kind of got into, like, all of those aspects, right? Um, so once I kind of had it all written down, I moved to a Google Doc. So I can have it all digitally. So I can, you know, print it out and hang it up somewhere. So I can take what I wrote on paper and have it in a more organized uh, fashion and to be a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, right? Um, and this is my agreement to me. This is what I'm upholding myself to. These are the standards that I'm upholding myself to, you know, but it's also just to stay focused and to get to know myself at this point in time. Me as a 40 year old, self-employed, entrepreneur, solopreneur, content creator, coach, daughter, friend, sister, cousin, auntie, all of those things, right? But in terms of my business and how that impacts, you know, all those aspects that surround me, I needed to know the deeper reasons why I was doing this, what are my goals? And then I realized, you know, I was like, what is my mission? Like, what, what do I want to do? And I'll share that with you guys. And it's three simple words, it, well, four. <laughs> My mission is to motivate, inspire, uplift, and encourage. Point blank period. I think I was always seeking to have these elaborate answers or to have these long paragraphs and statements when sometimes you just have to get to the point. Like I, I hope and, and pray that my content motivates you and inspires you and uplifts you and encourages you to want to be the best version of yourself, to challenge yourself, to... Find your comfort zones, but also challenge yourself to get to new heights and new levels, you know, or to be comfortable with money, to be comfortable with your self-worth, to have self-worth, you know? And then I moved on to, okay, well, that's my mission, right? But what are my key pillars? So I, I narrowed it down to service, community, and authenticity. 
I want to serve people, whether it's through this content, through one-on-one -on -one coaching, or just meeting random people on the streets, or maybe even my family and friends, right? Doing things to, to just uplift, encourage, but also help to make my world and the worlds I'm surrounded in a, a better place, right? A community. I thrive, you know, I, I can't do this without my community. So if I'm not serving my community, then my business is just going to fall apart, right? So think about pillars, pillars that hold up, they uphold things. Um, and then authenticity. I can only be me, 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 me. As Genuine said in his song, The Same OG. <laughs> but authenticity, you know, keeping it real, being honest and, and, and speaking from my point of view is, is valuable. It's key. It's a key pillar, right? It's um, what I feel has gotten me this far is people are attracted to my personality, my authenticity, my realness. And I, I thought that was important to have. And then values. What are your values? You know, so I hope you're answering these questions as I'm going through it. Um, and if you want to schedule one-on-one -on -one, or if you want this kind of written out in, a, in like a PDF form, let me know. Just email me, tc at transactioncare.com. And, you know, if you're someone kind of struggling with these points in your life, let's talk. That simple, right? Um, so, you know, my why, my goals. Then I was like, well, what is my mission? What are my, what are the, what are the key pillars upholding this mission? And then what do I value? You know, what are the, what are the values that I need to, to also uphold and maintain in order to have, you know, boundaries and, and, and the vision staying aligned and focused, right? And for me, it's like, I value fun, respect, creativity, and trust. Those are my four values at this time. It doesn't mean I don't value other things. It's just like these four things, fun, respect, creativity, trust, are the elements of my life that as long as I'm experiencing these things, I can move forward with integrity <laughs> and, um, and enjoy the process. Because if I'm not having fun, why would I continue doing it? There's so many opportunities and things to be doing in life versus just because I've been doing this for so long, that means I have to stay in it. No. Like if real estate were to go away from me today, I would figure something else out. I'd become a foodie. I'd go into music or something completely a 180 for me, like cooking, you know, like, cause YouTube exists, social media exists. There's no reason for me not to, to give my all in any area of life. You know, just because I invested 20 years of my life into something doesn't mean I can't just walk away from it tomorrow. But as long as I'm having fun, I'm, I'm respecting people and people are respecting me and I'm, you know, creativity is, is, is key and, um, trust, trust God, trust myself, trust the process and people trust me to, to get the job done. Um, then I moved on to who, uh, who is my target audience? But before we get to that, it's like, who do I need to become in order to achieve what I'm setting out to do? you know, and what do I want to feel? What do I want to experience? What do I want to um, achieve in all of this? You know, so part of it was like, I want to be, I want to, I want my audience or my community to feel like X, Y, Z. I want, you know, I'm talking to new real estate professionals from zero to five years experience. Cause even though I have 20 years of experience, from a self-employed aspect, I'm still a newbie in this space, you know, so I can only speak from that point of view. Um, and then also mix in the, the 15 years prior to that of what I've learned and, and the jobs I've had within the real estate industry and help you to apply that to make your job easier, to make your journey a little easier, you know, so you don't have to crawl, you can walk, you can run, uh, as they say, but you know, who is your target audience? Who are you speaking to? What do you want them to feel as well? What do you want them to experience? What do you want them to get out of your, you know, your content or your, your business, your, you know, the experience you're providing for them, the quality of service that you're providing for them. Um, you know, and, and then again, what is your ideal customer? They, they call this a customer avatar. I struggle with this often, but I found that kind of reverse engineering it. Like if someone is a brand new transaction coordinator, you know, what were they going through before that? 
What, what, what kind of job did they have? What are they trying to escape? Or where, where are they trying to go? And how can I help them? You know, how can I help even 2016 me when I was sitting at that desk just miserable like this, just staring at a computer, waiting for those eight to nine hours to go by and not knowing how to get out of it, get out of there. You know, talking to that version of me because I know I'm not the only one that is in a place where they just don't feel like they're they're living out their their true selves or utilizing the skills that they have because looking back at you know who am i talking to like who is it that i want to be of service to who is it that i want to have in my community who is it that i want to help and who is it that if they're willing to spend their hard-earned money on me to help them i want to make sure that we are aligned as well and of course if we're not i can always point you in the right direction but at the same time it's like I also need to know from my perspective to make sure that I'm working with with the right people to get them to where they need to be as well and a part of that is again knowing who your target audience is who your customer avatar is who your ideal customers are you know it doesn't have to just be one person it could be a group of people but I had to really get honest with like, who are these people, you know? And I think day by day, I'm still figuring that out. Um, and then I moved on to what are my financial money goals? And this is where, you know, it's, it gets, it can get uncomfortable for some people, uh, myself included. You know, I think I spend a lot of time trying to get out of my own way when it comes to my money mindsets and my money goals and the obsession I kind of have with uh, just every penny that comes in and out of my account. Uh, and I've experienced highs. I'm, I've experienced low of lows financially. Uh, and right now I'm just in a place where I'm uh, learning how to just let go, just let go, let God, but also just be, you know, if I want to be a full-time YouTuber, then let me go post the YouTube video, record the YouTube video, edit the YouTube video, instead of just sitting around looking at and refreshing my account every day, you know, and obsessing over, you know, where I'm lacking, you know, oh my God, I didn't make any money this week. And then falling into that trap of I'm not enough. I'm struggling. I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm losing, you know, it's like, it's that vicious cycle. So if you are a part of my newsletter, you're going to notice some changes. Like I'm including, I'm bringing back the affirmations. I'm, I'm splitting up my emails from one where we're just focused, like almost like a, a blog style type email where we get into like tips and resources and my experience and other experiences that can benefit us versus it being just like a hey do this do that and it just gets boring you know i want it to be more interactive and talk about things like this you know from my perspective as well as um also keeping you updated like all right the, the next email is just going to be an update with the links and the schedules of what's happening but the first email is gonna we're gonna talk about this stuff we're gonna get real we're gonna get honest and check in with each other right um so when it came down to the money part of this whole auditing of my life, I keep track of my money on, um, what is it called? Uh, Google, Google Sheets. So I'm not a, an Excel or Google Sheets expert. I used, I picked a template and then I just edited, edited it to my liking. And uh, I think it was just like an, in, an income and expense sheet but I broke it up into savings, personal expenses, and then some things are labeled debt. Uh, some things are labeled annual payments. Other things are labeled like what's getting paid with the credit card, um, uh, my domains, like things of that nature. And then I just broke down every single dollar, like down to the penny of what gets taken out and when and then ordering it putting it in the order in which like it on a weekly basis so 
every month from the 1st to the 7th, line by line. These are the items that are being taken out of my account, whether it's for my Roth, my high yield savings account, um, cash for me to spend for fun money. You know, I prioritize those first my groceries, uh, haircut, laundry, contact lenses, tax, then it goes into taxes, and then it goes into like my expenses, rent, insurance, um, internet, thing, you know, credit card uh, payments, monthly subscriptions, things of that nature. And then I also went into like, what do we got get what do we got to get rid of what do we got to take away <laughs> and i got everything down you know i was like i don't need to put that much into this account i don't need to put i don't need to spend this much i don't have to pay this down this quickly you know cuz what i realized through this whole process is like it's so important to pay yourself first and you have probably heard this on other videos from other people and I've experimented to where I didn't pay myself at all, meaning, I mean, I'd give myself a few bucks, like maybe a hundred bucks for the month, and then the rest just goes everywhere else. And then I would just be like back into this vicious cycle of debt. And this is all in the last like year and a half. And again, we'll talk about debt in a separate video, but in this last month of me really auditing my life, I was like, you know what? I'm so tired of all my money going to this debt pay down. I need to start bulking up on my savings. So I, I created small goals for myself. I was like, all right, I want to hit $100 in my, because I just opened a high yield savings account through SoFi. So if you're interested, I'll put the link in the, in the description. It's like a, a referral code. I think I get points or, or money back from it. So I just wanted to be, again, in the spirit of transparency. Um, but I was like, you know, I, I want to hit my first hundred dollars in my high yield savings account. So this is what it's going to require me to do. This is what I'm requiring myself to do. I already had like $40 in it. I, I, I'm starting really low, right? So I was like, well, I have to get to 60. So I pretty much was like, you know what? I'm gonna give myself to the, to the uh, end of the year to get to 200 but for now I want to get it to 100 so let me kind of re rearrange my money up into that around that and it's so interesting how that changed my whole mood <laughs> going from like I'm not investing in myself I'm not saving for myself to like $60 changing my whole perspective $60 like in the grand scheme of things, that's not a lot of money. But for me in this point in time where I was just getting myself into the, digging myself into like this deeper hole of just struggle for no reason. And having that shift and making that change financially, I was just like, oh, that feels really good. Because I put it away, I don't even look at it. You know, and then I um, sorry, I was like, all right, now I want to kind of bulk up my personal spending, you know. I want to at least have a minimum of $100 in there and that's going to be my new zero balance, right? So I started doing like little things like that and decreasing my credit card payments um, as a whole and focusing on two that I really wanted to tackle. One, the lowest balance and then two, the highest interest rate. So again, we'll talk about debt in a future video, but I just wanted to put that out there now for anyone struggling. I know there's like the avalanche method and the snowball method but truly I was like this $500 credit card I can knock that out but the one where the interest rate is like almost at 30% and I'm paying almost $200 a month on that and it's only paying down like 50 that doesn't make sense to me that's like it felt like once I sat down and broke down my money and looked at my interest rates and, and saw how much they were actually putting towards the credit card it kicked me back into shape. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. This is why I was in this rut. This is why I was struggling. So I broke down my money and I was just like, at the bare minimum, how much do I need to make? And I did the math. Well, I allowed Google Sheets to, to do the math. <laughs> and I was like, in order for me to be able to save, to afford my monthly groceries and all of my business and, and personal expenses and to pay down my debt and again to reiterate to have money in my savings 
because I was sacrificing my savings for a long time just to survive, I don't need to make that much. And if you guys knew the number, you would be mind blown. You'd probably be like, how are you not able to make that? I And I'll talk about that in, in, in a different video because that's a whole other experience that I'm enduring right now. But once I found out, like at the bare minimum, that's all I have to make, I just felt reinvigorated. I felt inspired again. I felt motivated to just get everything back in order. And I felt such a relief, like that weight that was on my chest just sitting there and that, that state of wonder because I, I wasn't clear on my why, on my goals, on my money, nothing. I wasn't clear on anything. Having that clarity, all this time I was working for the old me and I wasn't working for the new me. And now that I'm in this place of newness and I know who the new me is and where I want to be and, and why it's such a relief it doesn't take away the struggle it doesn't take away the, the the experience that you know it doesn't take away failure or any of that stuff but I now have more of a winning mindset and it's a winning mindset I'm going to do my best to uphold and maintain and, and fight for you know and, and realizing like oh my gosh like I can do all this by making this amount of money, I can do this. And then once I, you know, can consistently do that for the for the rest, remainder of the year, if I can prove to myself that I can earn this much for the remainder of the year or, or manifest this amount of money for me, you know, because I'm always open to free money, to gifts, to, to blessings and things of that nature. But also I know that the work I put out needs to equate this number. Anything below that, then we have to like revisit this whole strategy. But this is my, my, the lowest of the low that we can go. And then I also gave myself, you know, these are the, 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 um, the goals for next year that I want to, you know, and then we want to like kind of double what we're making next year. But in order to get there, I need to implement the habits and the strategies and, and the plans and the rest and, and the, the peace of mind and the fitness and the exercise all today all of those habits will pay pay myself in the future um and I, I just got really granular like really specific with everything and laid it all out i was being honest and true with it you know there was there was tears there was laughter there was doubt fear uncertainty but also excitement um, there was also anticipation towards something greater, something bigger. There was clarity. I can't stress the clarity aspect of it all. So auditing my life, it, it took, um, I would say, I would say two weeks in whole of just like revisiting this and coming back to it. And like, how do I want my businesses to look? Do I still want to keep certain aspects of it like how am i doing with the podcast do i still want to keep the podcast then you guys let me know if you're still watching do you guys like the podcast is it working you know what are the benefits what you know what what are what are what are the what's working and what's not you know what i mean and where am i putting too much time when i could be reinvesting in other areas that will be more beneficial so and more beneficial not just for me but for my target audience and my community you know, and then I kind of did the same thing with my personal brand. And I mean, this is also my personal brand, but I have another one outside of that. Um, and then lastly, I, I went into my dreams. I, I just was like, you know what? Let me be outlandish. Let me be risk taking. Let me be loud and, and, and open to what I want and what I need. And again, one of my dreams was like uh, an iPad Pro, you know, and then one of my other outlandish dreams on the other spectrum was a free car. Like someone who wants to give me an Audi RS Q8 <laughs> or just an everyday day-to-day -day car because I don't have a car. And I'm at a point right now where I'm realizing it's time to get a car, you know, but then how does that now fit into my life financially and, and everything that I just went through, right? Um, I would love for, have, for my student loans to be forgiven. Um, there's so many things, you know, but what it came down to at the end of it was quality of life. 
what is the quality of life that I want for myself and how am I going to reverse engineer that? You know, if quality of life is at the top, how can I get there today? So that's where I landed. Thank you for watching. I know I kind of um, went a little longer with this vlog, but that's okay because really taking yourself serious in your life and your business and your career and even your family and friends. You know, I don't, I don't like career when it comes to priorities. I just wrote this down. We're, oh gosh, see, this is the problem with me having too many notebooks is well, when it comes to, you know, knowing your priorities and that's another tab that you could put or another uh, section in this whole auditing process is like, what are your priorities? You know, it's, it's God, faith, it's, it's me, you know, um, mind, body, and soul. Then it's uh, family, then it's friends. Well, family and friends are combined, you know, and I, and I put close slash best friends. Um, then I think career was fifth. Travel, experiences, you know, then that, 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 those can switch. But I know without, you know, a livelihood, I, it's hard, harder. It doesn't mean it's impossible. Because I've, I've had free trips, I've had all of the above, you know, so it doesn't necessarily mean that you can have fun and experiences like, you know, money isn't the only way to have fun and, and experience the world. Um, so I know those can be inter interchangeable, but yeah, like career is, is not like number one for me. It's a part of this journey. So I, I'm out here prioritizing like quality of life not quality of career i mean yes i want those things but quality of life as a whole you know and, and career is a part of that but i know in order for me to have a successful career by my definition of success these things need to be in place and i need to be reminded of these things because i am so quick to forget and get distracted and lose focus and you know not be disciplined and and then i start to be lazy i start to procrastinate and self-sabotage and avoid so do this for yourself i encourage you to you know if you already have these things in place go revisit them are they up to date are they needing to be you know adjusted because like i said i was working for old me not new me today and now that i know where new me today wants and needs to go or, or praise you know, you know, again, it's God's plan. So I'm, I'm learning also how to surrender through all of this. But ultimately, seeing it helped me to believe it. And now that it's all out on paper, you know, but then print it out and, and keep these promises to yourself and stay aligned because anything or anyone outside of what I just wrote down is either a distraction or a bonus. You know what I mean? Every, but other than that, we're on this path, God first. And I feel like everything else will work out. So <laughs> if you made it through the end of this video, thank you so much. This was a longer one. I know, I know, I know. But give yourself grace. Really sit with who you are at this point in time, what you've learned, what you want to learn, who you want to meet, who you want to be. And take the time to really invest in yourself. And if you have questions about this and, and or maybe you're struggling, you're stuck on, on how to get all this out, uh, reach out. I'm here. Schedule a one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe it's just a 20-minute conversation you need to get things off of your chest and kind of break through those barriers or those mental or emotional or physical blocks. And I appreciate you all for listening this far, watching this far. Please share this video with a bestie or a colleague, a coworker, a friend, a family member that you think could benefit from this. You're now a part of the winning team. That's all I got to say. That's all I got to say. You, ways that you could reach me, transactioncare.com. Easy. That's my website. One-on-one uh, -on -one coaching. Everything is on my website. You can join me on Patreon. Yes, I officially have a Patreon. I'm going to leave that there. Link also in the description. Please subscribe. At the point of this video recording, I'm at about 1,100 subscribers, which is amazing because I feel you guys' presence. It, it, I feel your energy. It, it is seen. It is embraced. It is appreciated. It is valued. Again, we're on the winning team, people, so it's up to us to keep going, stay encouraged, uplift, and encourage each other. And 
that's all I got for now. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. What do we got? What do we got? Um, podcast, YouTube, coaching. And just go have fun. Just go have fun with all of this. Enjoy it. And you got this. So with all that said, care for yourself. Care for your wealth. Your time is worth it. Let's coordinate. Talk soon.